Um, I feel like <laughs> two times now you've said something, and not that I didn't have anything to say, but you said something like, uh huh. I'm going to move on to do it. I, I concur. <laughs> Shut up, Brandon. <laughs> this week, we try three NA beers to wrap up our dry January. This is episode 131 of the Malting Hour. What's the hats on the hops? Guy, yeast, and speech. This is the Malting Hour where we talk about our drink and tell you what we think every other week. And if we get drunk, well, we might slur our speech. Got the gift of gab, the friends who wish you had. Join us for a drink, join us for a laugh. Time is never wasted, where you getting wasted? The Malting Hour here, people, people take your places. People, people take your places. Welcome to the Malting Hour. I am one of your hosts, Tony Miller, joined always with Brandon Winninger and special guest down by Brandon's feet. Oh, she didn't meow. Aggie's here. Give her time. She yeah, will. <laughs> sure enough. Brandon, this is it. This is our last week of Dry January. Well, our last episode of Dry January. It's your your ending Dry January very soon. Correct. I am full fledged not in Dry January anymore. I was dry in January. <laughs> I drank yesterday at Revolution. I've had Prost, cinnamon Prost here on tap, and when I leave here, I'm probably going to have two more beers. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> but you know what? It was a good break of, of not drinking all the time. Yeah. I like it. I have to remember just maybe they factor that into my life regularly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been kind of weird because I feel like just even not drinking, though, like, my sleep's still been so kind of crazy. Oh, that's okay. Um... And like, there's like at the beginning of the month, I was waking up at like four o'clock every morning, Whoa. and I was just like wide awake. There was a couple nights where I I was going to sleep early, I'm like oh nine o'clock, to try and get get to bed, and I'd wake up at like midnight, <sighs> and I'd be awake till like three in the morning. I'm like, oh come on. Yeah, so. I've had those. I did that recently actually, where I thought I was like, you know what? It's eight thirty. I'm feeling real tired. I'm gonna go to bed, and I went to bed, and then I woke up at eleven and was wide awake and. Didn't go to bed until like two in the morning. Yeah, so that's fun. That's always fun. But other than that, uh, it's been a pretty non-eventful uh, dry January, which is uh, normally what dry January is. And uh, we have a couple more NA options. I think three, yeah, three that we've not tried. Yeah. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, as you guys know, for the last few that we've, well, the last one that we tried, the Go Brewing one was 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 pretty good. Um, I did enjoy that. I don't know if you saw, but it made me think of Go Brewing because Go Brewing. I looked at their their tap list, and they have like they they have a ton of NA beers on tap. And we got an email from, which is kind of cool. I appreciate it. We get regular communications from like the the Brewers Association, and they had sent. I don't know if they did a study or they were just kind of looking into the whole like the the non alcoholic thing and. Not specifically like it being in cans, but it being on draft. And the thing it kind of stated was that um, when regular beer is in, or when regular beer is on draft, there's alcohol in there, and alcohol has properties to kill like you know microorganisms and things like that. But when you have non-alcoholic beer, and it's sitting in lines, oh yeah, and for like an extended period of time, what does that do? Interesting. But so then I was like, oh, so that made me think of Go Brewing. But then I also thought about, I'm like, like Starbucks does cold brew coffee on all these places do coffee on tap yeah. and things like that. So I don't know if like the acidity of coffee would like be a deterrent. Could or, be. That's a good. Yeah, that's that's um, actually really interesting. But it, it was. <laughs> I, I started skimming it. I didn't get a chance to kind of dive too deep into it. But I thought that was that was kind of interesting. So. Great. Now I want to read that because that does sound really interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. again, like I'm I'm excited that they. Send us stuff like that. So yeah, it's cool to have a little bit of a an inside look. So this is uh, sorry, I saw you peeking yeah. over here. This is Sierra Nevada's non-alcoholic Trail Pass Golden. I'm looking on their website that they have the Trail Pass IPA as well. I think that those are the only two. Damn it! It smells fantastic. Well, that smells like a good beer. Yeah, that smells like a real good beer. Oh, they have their Hop Splash and Hop Splash Citrus. Those are their, those are non-alcoholic drinks. I'm always. <clears throat> I'm always real worried about IP, like trying non-alcoholic IPAs. Like I thought the Go Brewing one was real good because it was a quote unquote double IPA, yeah. which made it taste like a decent IPA, IPA. and I liked that. Um, so when I saw this as the the Golden Nail, I wanted to try that first. Yeah, I feel like the having the um, the addition of hops if you're doing like a, a double IPA, trying to make it non-alcoholic, that gives it a little more body and makes it 
you know, um, more passable as like a, like a decent IPA. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> I feel like <laughs> two times now you've said something, and not that I didn't have anything to say, but you said something like, uh huh. I'm going to move on to do this. I, I concur. <laughs> Shut up, Brandon. Uh, all right, here he goes. This is Trail Pass Golden from Sierra Nevada. Grab a trail pass and start a nonstop adventure with miles of flavor. Explore the smooth malt and crisp finish in non-alcoholic Trail Pass Golden. A refreshing, easy drinker with a surge of hops for bright florals, bright and floral citrus notes. If a craft drinker is looking for that non-alcoholic option, but still wants a complete beer experience, this is going to be for them, says James Connery, and our Innervation Brewmaster. Now available, now available nationwide, currently direct shipping to all lower 48 states except Georgia, Idaho, Michigan. You know, we're not Georgia does not want that. Georgia doesn't want that. Uh, Especially on Sundays. Br- <laughs> I wonder you can't. That's, I wonder, I bet you can't buy non-alcoholic beers. In I feel like even I know for a fact that like um, a lot of beer store, like the like if it's just like the straight up beer and wine places, those are closed. Yeah, if they have non-alcoholic beer. Yeah, that's like, still so very wild to me. And then like I would assume like the grocery section, like they some of the stores I know they're like have it like separated, and they'll like have a gate that like close it off, and I'm like. I would assume that it's probably the NA stuff is behind that yeah. firewall. You know what's funny? I <laughs> bought, what did I buy recently that was NA? Oh, when I bought the Go Brewing from Mariano's, mm-hmm. I didn't get carded for it. Really? Yeah, nothing came up to say like 21 or over. Interesting. Which surprised me because I feel like all the other non alcoholic stuff you need to get carded for. Yeah. And I didn't, it, it rang up fine and I didn't have to, nobody had to come and check my ID. It had self checkout because I'm trying to ruin the American job. I really want to see, like, let's get, I'm going to go in one day and have Benjamin just go up there and just throw it up there and be like, I'm thirsty. And be like, <laughs> I want this. They scan it. I want to be like, Dad. <laughs> See, I got me a sixer. <laughs> scan it. See what happens. <laughs> see the lemon pay. See that it could enjoy your uh, non-alcoholic beer. So this this beer, this non-alcoholic beer, it looks. I mean, it looks like a beer. That's a golden, the clear golden ale. It's very pretty, actually. Yeah. Um, smells hoppy. It smells like uh, fresh wort when you're brewing. It smells like exactly. beer. Like at first, I got beer, and then I was like, no, it smells like I'm brewing. It smells yeah. like I'm, I'm brewing a beer. What are your takes on the taste of it? Um, I'm getting, it's, I'm, I'm, it's from the, the non-alcoholic stuff we've tried so far and the couple of ones that I've had, like I'm getting what tastes more malty to me than like I normally get. Sure. And I feel like in a lot of the, the NA beers, there's, you know, they hop it a little bit either heavier or differently to kind of mask the fact that there's really no malt body. Which is crazy because it's brewed like a traditional beer typically, and then there's the process to remove the alcohol. But I feel like that kills some of the maltiness or whatever. I mean, just in my experience, I guess you know what I what I get out of the the the, the taste. But I'm feeling like like there's if somebody told me this was like a three percent gold, like I I would believe it. Okay, I would like it. It drinks like a regular beer. It drinks like a golden ale. Um, and I, I love love the hops in it. I love like it's the mouthfeel is not it's not super super thin like some NA beers. It's got a little bit of like it's got a little heft to it. And it, I think from heft my, as in not like like heavy beer, yeah. but like there's more body to yeah, it yeah. than yeah. I know I know what you mean. I think this is like this might be. I mean, it's up there as like one of the best ones I've had this mm. year. So right on. And I've had a couple, so I'm. I'm on the. I don't know. I'm gonna take another sip real quick. Hold on. I'm glad you mentioned the maltiness because there is that like kind of malt sweetness in there. Yeah. And and also uh, as a forward to this, uh, we popped in the freezer for a little bit because I did just grab it. It's been sitting there for like 20 minutes wrapped in a. Yeah. It's not ice cold, no. which I feel like is good. Um, it actually reminds me of a hop water trying to be a beer. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm. But because I, I really enjoy uh, these different hop waters, like Lagunitas has one. The Revolution Super Zero is probably my favorite hop water right now. Um, it's just so much flavor. It's so good. It's so refreshing. 
that I actually, when I go to grab one, I'm like, do I want to have one? It's like going for a beer for me because I'm like, do I want to do I want to have one of these right now? Yeah. It's like a treat. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just just hot flavored water. It's just drink it, Tony. <laughs> this though, I guess maybe it's the fruitiness of the hops. Like when I take a sip, it reminds me kind of bit of the Super Zero sparkling hop water okay. from Revolution. And again, that's I don't think that's a bad thing, but for me personally, it's not hitting. It's not hitting beer so much. And again, I'm not going out of my like. If, if you're out there drinking alcoholic beers regularly, anyway, you'll you'll probably have a better idea of, of what you want in a non-alcoholic beer. I think if I was looking for a non-alcoholic beer, I wouldn't go for this one in that sense of like, oh, I want to have a beer. Yeah. That that doesn't have like it has low alcohol or no alcohol at all. Um, but with that being said, I wouldn't pass this up as a drink to have, other than the fact that. It's still about eighty five calories. Yeah. Uh, for flavored like a flavored carbonation carbonated yeah. drink. But I mean drink a Coke or a Pepsi. I mean, it's like how many grams of sugar? It's still not bad. Yeah. Eighty five calories for and you know us. You've seen pictures of us. We definitely care about our calorie intake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good overall it's good. I just and I like it. Do I like it as an NA beer option? No, but I do like it as a non-alcohol, a non-alcoholic option. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, and I like I'm know. not gonna pass this. I'm not gonna pass it up. Like it's tasty. It's it yeah. is is a tasty drink. I like it. Yeah, I mean, there's something about it that I just really enjoy, and I, I sure. like, and I think it's that you know that slight maltiness. I feel like mostly because there's been a few that I've had this January that have been rather disappointing. Yeah. Um, and I feel like this... And hits, that's a bummer. This hits closer to that. Now, like, would I put this up against the Go Brewing? No, I feel like the Go Brewing, like, brought more. Mm-hmm. But, like, for a Golden Ale, like, I feel like they like most of the flavor profile that they were trying to go for and, like, that I would expect um, is there. So, um, like, kudos to them for making a decent NA option. I think I'd like it to be slightly... Like just a tit, a tit, a tit. <laughs> just, just slightly. A tit. I'd like it to be a tit. I'd like it to be a, we a tad bit more bitter. I think that's what I'm missing. Okay. If there was a bit more that. bitterness to this, I think they were leaning more on the malt, malty side of the beer, yeah. which that's not a bad idea. But if it was, it was, it was slightly more bitter. I think that I might appreciate or, or enjoy it a bit. When was it canned? More. Uh, let's see. This was. Eleven seven twenty three. So it's not no no. That's 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 within a, a fairly. They had a couple. They had like some hop waters, and I, actually now I kind of wish I got the Athletic Brews Golden Ale too, because then we could have had two like different side side. yeah side by side Golden Ale. Because I do like all the Athletic beer stuff. Their stuff's good. We could do a full episode on that, which we are about to have an Athletic beer because the next two beers are dark beers, which I thought would be mm-hmm. fun to go because I've never had. An NA stout, so I'm pretty really? excited. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to do that. I'm almost positive I've never had an I NA stout. We've done one on the show. Have we? I thought so. I don't Maybe think not. so. Maybe. I know I've had some, and they were. Just I think like, you've had. Nah. Yeah, I think you've had some. Well, we've got nah. we've got one from Athletic Brewing, and the and the the one the goat the goat of beers the one that was to, that I've seen if it's the most like closely tied to the way the beer actually tastes other than Heineken Zero, which again. You don't like Heineken, don't drink it. I'm not a huge fan of Heineken, but that fucking tastes like Heineken. Yeah. Heineken Zero is straight up that tastes like Heineken. Yeah. And if you wanna, if you want beer that has no alcohol in it, that that's that's the one to be. But uh, Guinness is the one that uh, yeah. we're gonna do. Which one do you want to do next? Um, I don't know. Which one do you think we should do? What are you feeling? One, I guess. What's that? We can do athletic. I'm gonna grab the athletic one. I'll be right back. So yeah, so kind of coming off what Tony said, one of the one of the reasons I grabbed the the Guinness uh, NA was because we had heard, um, and and I specifically heard from a couple of different like beer groups, and people were saying that um, as far as non alcoholic beers go, that one kind of runs pretty true. So and like Tony said about the Heineken, I haven't had the Heineken NA in a while. I had that like. Years ago, a couple years ago, I think we may. I don't know if we did it on the show, it's possible, but I know I had one once. I think I was out in like San Francisco and I was drunk 
and I didn't feel like drinking it. I didn't like I wasn't going home, and I didn't. I don't want to drink any more booze, but I do want some more beer. But I didn't feel like drinking. I was out, yeah. whatever. I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll have a drink. Um, and it was, it was, like you said, it's pretty spot on to the original. So, yeah, I would like. I would have. I, I would next year. We should have. We should try and hit all major brands. Um, Na, oh, yeah, yeah, because I mean, there's Heineken. I know there's a Budweiser one. I don't know if there's a Miller one. I know there's a Stella Zero. Yep. So there's a bunch of like major brands that uh, have Na. So this is Athletic Brewing's All Out Non Alcoholic Extra Dark. Contains less than 0.5 percent. There's oh wait, here we go. I I'm glad I'm doing all this shit with the. Uh, no glasses. Here we go. An especially bold and extra dark brew. All Out is an adventure. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> all Out is an adventure all its own. It has a silky, full-bodied mouthfeel and a pleasantly toasty finish with a del- with delicate notes of coffee and bittersweet chocolate. On the days you were, on the days you you've given your all. <laughs> Uh, it's a go-to brew to grab, relax, reset, then reach for another. So there we go. Uh, 90 calories as well. So there we go. The low ABV, low alcohol. What do you think about the smell? Um, I'm getting that roastiness. Yeah, right off the bat. I got that. It's got a nice head on it too. Yeah. It looks like, I mean, this looks like a dark beer. I'm going in for my first sip. What do you think? To me, it tastes more like a like a light coffee porter, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, it's very light. Yeah, um, I'm. I feel, God, I gotta take another sip. This is I'm the home brewer <laughs> in me is about to come out. Hold on. Well, see, and that's that's the thing that like blows my mind is how, and I mean these might be you know they're brewing them just to have these NA beers, but like. You know how you make these stouts that are just so like, you know, have like a good mouthfeel and it's just like you can taste the heft of the beer. And like if you brewed a beer like that and then did the process for, you know, removing the alcohol, does you do you lose the body? Is that what happens? I would like, think you, I think probably you do, especially with the lower calories yeah. and stuff. So here's my take. It's a thin beer and the color on it, by the way, it, it looks like a porter because you can kind of see through it. Um, it's like that cola type. Yep. I mean, not necessarily a porter. Their stouts are like that, but still, it definitely has that cola-like quality to it as far as the color and being able to see through it. It reminds me of the first time or the other times where I, where I'm getting grains to brew a beer, and I still like to taste like the grains. Like when I get them, mm-hmm. like I'll take a piece and chew on it. And this tastes like this beer tastes like the liquid form of that. And I don't think that, I'm not. That's not an insult. No. But it's very roasty. Yeah. But there's no bitterness to complement that roastiness where you would think maybe like coffee or like a stout. Like I I just get roasty and then light body. By the way, we need to go back real quick. And that's Sierra Nevada. <laughs> how many I was wondering if you were gonna go back. <laughs> I am. How many how many trails are you walking down that Um I'm gonna go three eight. Three eight? Okay. I'm going three four. Three four on that. Sorry, I was just thinking about that. Um <laughs> This is yeah. This is missing. This is missing the bitterness. I like. I do like it though. Yeah. I do like it, and I don't feel like I'm not. Again, there's been plenty of times where we have beers where like this is not good. <laughs> this. Yeah, for what it is. I would have it again. Yeah, for what it is, it's good. But like again, it's not. It doesn't fall into a stout category for me. Um, yeah. I'm not getting so much. I'm not. I don't think I'm getting any coffee really. I'm getting more of that. Like you said, like the just the, the the roast. And I just took another big sip, and That's a good I'm roast, actually though. losing the roastiness. Oh, interesting. Are you getting anything else, or is it just starting to taste like? Kind of tastes like an alcoholic beer. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I, I've kind of lost the roastiness. I mean, it's still it's still there, but now it's like the first thing that popped in my head was like, oh yeah, there's that like, I don't say tangy, but like that fruity type hoppiness that you get from NA beers. Yeah. I'm getting that, and then there's oh yeah, there's that roastiness, and the roastiness is like if you've ever had like a chocolate covered espresso bean, take away the chocolate sweetness and just bite into the espresso bean again. 
not an insult, just kind no, of just what bitterness. I'm getting, like that 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 roastiness. Yeah, yeah. I, I want, but I want the bitterness. That's what I'm missing from this beer as well. As opposed to the Sierra Nevada Trail Pass, I wanted a hoppy bitterness. For this one, I want that like roasty bitterness that you find in stouts. You know what I mean? Agreed. Again, not a bad beer. No. Like my favorite one from them was, uh, God, what was it? Was it a sour? Yeah, it was a sour. I got a. I, they gave me one last year for free for my birthday. If you yes. sign up, you get a free six pack. I think is what it was. And they sent me an email today, like your birthday's around the corner. I'm like, ooh, do I get something else? So like, just a reminder to buy some stuff. And I was like, no, yeah. no, yeah. you guys aren't, you guys aren't wrong. <laughs> I do, I do want to try some of their other things. I wish they had more things available in stores, so I didn't have to pay shipping and handling. But I might try yeah. some more of those. That they're. I'm very interested in their other sours, and I, I wish more brewer, breweries who are doing NA beers would do sour options. Okay. Sour options, to me, might be the easiest way to approach NA beers. And yes, it's a very, I don't think it's a very big crowd that's like, oh, I'm not drinking beer, so I'll drink a sour beer, like a sour NA beer instead. Mm -hmm. But it's... It's way more refreshing. It's really enjoyable. I, I got like, you know, malty, but also then here's that like sour fruit or sour beer, whatever the sour sourness in it. And it was just way more enjoyable. It's it's still my favorite non-alcoholic beer. And I, I think it's called Soul Something. I feel like I saw, um, it may have been a Facebook ad because I feel like after we did the Go Brewing um I started noticing more, like, just ads on Facebook for, like, yeah, because, for Go Brewing. Because we also looked up Go Brewing on yeah, our yeah. phones. I so, saw the same thing. <laughs> um, and I, But I feel like one of the things that I like I saw or read about them was that they their go-to or their flagship is a sour. Oh, nice. Um, or they're known for their for a, uh, some sour any beers that they do. So I'd be interested to seek that out. Yeah, I would like to try that as as well. Just because, I mean, because the, the, the double IPA was really well done you know it was good for what it was i'd be curious to see how well they did uh i was right by the way back to uh the other one uh the athletic group was called soul sour and it was for black history month which my birthday falls so that's the reason why i was able to get that one and i don't know if they're doing it again this year i it would be really awesome if they did because it was just really tasty and very very refreshing i, I love that one that one was great there was another stout i was gonna get it was a nitro mocha Ooh, stout that sounds good yeah, but I figured since we already had Guinness, I mean, we can grab that one again. Like, Beer on the Wall did have a nice, like, gluten-free, non-alcoholic uh, area that I, I'm going to keep an eye on to see if we can get the IPA one. We can throw that into an episode one time from Sierra Nevada. Oh, yeah. And then whatever athletic beers they might randomly have that you can't just get in the store. Because for the most part, I think it's the IPA, Golden Ale, and I know they have a... A lot. I just I just had the side open. I know they have a like a light lager like one that yeah here it is. It is a golden ale. Okay, now that it's it's changing. Thank you for not doing that. Run Wild, which is their IPA. Upside Dawn is their golden ale. Then they have Athletic Light, which is like a light beer. Free Wave is their hazy IPA. All Out is the one we're drinking right now. There we go, light copper. It's uh, Cerveza Athletica. And then they have just straight up uh, hopped waters, it looks like. Um, sparkling water infused with hop with like different flavors, mangoes. That stuff I'd like to try too because I love I love hop water. I want to get back to making hop water so I can have that on tap or just, you know, available. Hop water is so easy to make when you're a home brewer. Water and hops. Water, hops, and some type of citrus to help the pH. Oh, yeah. So shit. Okay, so I just took another sip mm -hmm. after us talking. I get a little bit of that roastiness again. But again, it's it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Uh, Brandon, there's a moon on this. I like I do like the can design nice on can. it too. Same with the Sierra Nevada one. The Sierra, Sierra Nevada one just looks straight up like a Sierra Nevada beer. Yeah, it's funny because if I wouldn't have, like, if I blindly was just buying stuff, especially at like a place like Beer on the Wall where they just yeah. have cans in there. I could have mistaken that. Even though, I mean, it says non-alcoholic there right above Trail Pass, but I would have been like, I know, I would have been like, oh, Trail Pass Golden, got it, grab it. <laughs> I didn't read everything else, and I can. Um, how many moons are you giving this? Um, 
gonna go about three seven five. Three seven five, nice. Three three six to three seven five. Yeah. I'm gonna go three two on this. Okay. Um, doesn't mean I don't like it. It's just uh, I'm. I guess I was hoping just for a little bit more bitterness. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you know, would have been would have been nice. I think for me, um, having had some NA stouts before and drinking them and them presenting themselves as portis, I kind of knew what I was getting into. I had a feeling this was going to go that route, so I'm not shocked. So my expectations sure. are not shattered. So pretty much, your heart wasn't was, broken like mine. No, my it's heart pretty much <laughs> what I was expecting. So yeah, overall, I mean, good. I would definitely have it again, and I'm, you know, that's not. It's def- both of these beers. I'm not, you know, like oh, I'll, I'll never try an NA beer from them again. Brandon, I know we're kind of flying through time here, but we really only have one more beer left. Yeah. Do you want me to go grab that one, or do you yeah. want to grab it? Where are we at on time? Uh, we're about almost 30 minutes. 30 minutes? You know what? Even though the second half is a little shorter, we'll take a quick break. Ba-doo. I'm going to drink this co-op hot sauce. Welcome back to our final NA beer episode of 2024. This is how we start the year, and uh, this is it, man. This is the one that we've been told that uh, is the best NA beer. It is Guinness Zero. Guinness Zero. Non alcoholic draft. Contains less than 0.5. Oh, it's even got the little got the nitro. Yeah. Oh, I might need to do that. I like that. Oh, there it goes. I just activated it. 
<laughs> and a tippet. All right, I'm gonna pour it like a regular Guinness. For those that think Guinness is like a loaf of bread, do you even drink beer? Do you even drink bread? <laughs> <laughs> do you even drink bread? It's cascading like a, a regular Guinness a little quicker, but it's doing it. Looks like a Guinness. It's got that cola-like uh, color. I'm going to go in for the smell. Hmm. It smells like... I mean, it smells like Guinness. Yeah. I think so. It's got the head like Guinness. I'm excited. I'm going in for my first sip. Interesting. I'd like to know what you think, Brandon. Huh? I'd like to know what you think. 60 calories, the lowest of the alcohol of the NA beers we've done, too. It's got protein in it, too, just so you know. 13 Ooh. carbs. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, it's pretty good. Not bad. Yeah. Is it Guinness? No, it's missing a little something. But I feel like as far as NA versions of beers go... This is pretty solid. Yeah. And it, like, this... Like, unmistakably is, like, a, a Guinness. Yeah, it... Because it's it, got the smell and everything, like... Yeah, it 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 tastes like Guinness, but it's also... I gotta get another sip. I'm taking big gulps of this, too. <laughs> so easy to. Mm-hmm. It's like, there's that Guinness taste. But then there's something else there. It's like yeah. sarsaparilla or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not what it is. But I can't, like, pinpoint what it is, but... You know what this does have, the last two beers didn't have, is the bitterness I'm looking yep. for when it comes to an NA beer. So right away, like, Guinness is, is king uh, of the three. Yeah, and what I, it's got, as far as the bitterness goes, it is pretty spot on close to what a what, normal Guinness would Absolutely. Have, so. It looks like a Guinness, it smells like a Guinness. I mean, it's, it's pretty damn close to yeah. a Guinness. Would I make a Guinness beef stew with this? Probably not. I don't know if I go that far. No. Yeah, I'd want that rich... Bold flavor that that Guinness. But even like I would even tell like anybody that even if you're if you don't drink like if you're gonna cook with a Guinness like cook with a Guinness. There's no reason to cook with this. (laughs) No, there's no reason to cook with any NA beer. No, I don't know. I can't think of a like you're gonna cook the the booze out anyway. So might as well just have the flavor there. But Brandon, it's a part of my religion. I can't have alcohol. What am I supposed to do? It cooks out, stupid. Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe there's. Well, I mean, there's definitely people that just can't have alcohol. For in sure, house. yeah, of course. So yeah, I'm, I'm completely on board with that. But I feel like, yeah, this isn't a substitute for something that you would cook with. Um, but overall, this is good. Yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. Yeah, very well done. Um, I do like the head is still. Chilling. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. That, this is. I mean this is that's that nitro. I mean this is straight up like this is as close as I think you can get. To having what a beer, like I said, the the macro brews, like the Heineken, tastes like Heineken. I can, exp- I'm pretty sure that the Stella is probably gonna taste like Stella. Yeah, you know, I mean, they're both in green bottles, so you're gonna get a skunky flavor. Anyway. And the snozberries <laughs> taste like snozberries. Absolutely. Um, I'm curious. I wonder if the Guinness, uh, the open gate here, has the NA on tap. Hmm. Um, our good friend Pat was at the Guinness brewery. Oh, really? He went uh, last Sunday. Um, before I met him at Illuminated, he went there and he said he had like five, I think he said he had like five drinks there. Um, and his wife originally was going to come to Illuminated and he goes, yeah, she did one brewery today. She doesn't need to do another one. I'm like, I don't blame her. She's a one and done. Not a bad Um, choice. Yeah. He said the stuff they had there was, was pretty good. So, um, is there a specific one they make here for Chicago? There is what it is. I don't know. There's cause they... From my understanding, what somebody had said was, I, I think they might be brewing Guinness there, but somebody also said that they're the, the actual Guinness is coming in from Ireland. It's a possibility. And then they're doing like one-off stuff there. Nice, because I know Baltimore, there's a Baltimore golden one that they do, um, like a golden ale that they have at the Baltimore facility. But yeah, I really want to go there. I can't believe I haven't been there yet. I need to make it a, we need to make it a mission this year to, to go there and check it out. Really surprised we haven't been there yet. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of places that I still want to go to. <laughs> there's a ton of breweries I haven't been to. I First, having a beer podcast, it's amazing. Well, I haven't even, I haven't been back to Lagunitas yet. Lagunitas yet, and I was the one that was like, 
screaming for that place yeah. <laughs> to reopen. We probably should make it. Maybe that's part of the plan. We're talking about some of the things coming up this year. Yeah. Maybe go take a trip over there. Um, so Hit up both of them, Lavinia's and Guinness, in the same day. So, yep, we could. So here is the the current tap list at Open Gate. They have the Kinsey Street Pale Ale. Um, I can get behind that. It's uh, Galaxy and Citra Hopped. Oh, I can really get behind that. Um, the Corn Maze Cream Ale. Interesting, I like that. Lightly sweet, crisp, made with all Illinois growing, grown corn. In your face, spotted cow. Um, right up your alley, they have one called Spruce Stuff. Great. It's a Pacific Northwest Red IPA, steep with blue spruce tips. Okay, that sounds interesting. Yeah. That sounds... That sounds good. Uh, Galaxy IPA, tropical notes of peach rings and mango. Ooh, yeah, okay. Slattes, midnight fireworks, brewed with lime, ginger, and marion berries. What? Marion berries a part of that? Oh, the marion berries. Sorry. Uh, They have a winter warmer. I like that. I'm a big fan of winter warmers. Uh, with Madagascar vanilla bean, nutmeg, and cinnamon. What the shit? Why are we not there? You're right. Um, it's really cold here. A classic West Coast <laughs> hops, 38% rice, <laughs> citrus, and pine. Interesting. Uh, Alter Ego, um, another fruity hopped beer, another one cheeky mild. But yeah, so I think, so we've got like the the corn maize cream ale, uh, which is made with Illinois corn. And then the Kinsey Street Pale Ale. That sounds really good. Yeah. I want to go. Maybe I need to go to that for my birthday. Oh, yeah. No offense, Revolution. You've been my go-to spot for the last, I don't know, forever. (laughs) And plus, you've got all those variants still on tap. Next next weekend, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, Pat texted me uh, last night, like shortly, I mean not shortly, I think like an hour or two after I saw your picture on, on Facebook. Um, and he's like, are you are you at the Revolution thing? And I'm like, no. <laughs> There's nothing like, oh. to drink except for Super, Super Zero. I think he said he picked up on and on. Um, and I don't know if he'll have any, like if he's going to, he doesn't go through beer that quickly. Um, but I told him, I think I have the original on and on, like the first one. Yeah, part two, they didn't package. Yeah, so I still have the first one. I said I, I could bring that up on the 17th. Nice. If he has the third one. You and I. We'll probably drink a third one, um, probably for the after the final pour coming up. The this next one, nice. not that we're drinking it tonight, but yeah. I'm assuming uh, I was gonna bring that one, and you and I can have that. We'll have it sometime this week when yeah. we record. Because yeah, I got that. I did try the VSOR last night, which was very tasty. All their other, they at Revolution they did the three components of what they blended the actual on and on part three with and okay. it was uh very good there's a barley wine a dry stout and then basically a double barrel death star i think i got i got an email death from star. Vinny's that they're gonna have the vsor mm. it's worth picking up if you, i mean i know it's the price point is a little if you want to spend 50 bucks it's a little expensive but it's definitely a a, a tasty tasty beer uh and the, i'm looking forward to trying on and on part three because i did like all the on and ons. And the last time we had on and on was uh, when me, you, and Clark went to Half Acre. Oh yeah, for right before your birthday. Oh yeah, your surprise birthday. Um, shout out to Half Acre. Somebody uh, posted today. Uh, today shared. I guess they posted on uh, X or Facebook or whatever. I forgot where I saw it, but they now have a kids menu. Hey, at the fantastic. <laughs> Because there's been times where, like, you know, it's just me and Benjamin, and we need to go to dinner, and I'm like, where do you want to go? And he's always like, Old Irving. I'm like, Old Irving. And I'll always... I, Get I always, over it, kid. I always go... I mean, I love, I love Old Irving. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. And I love taking him there. And I, I was happy that that's where he chose this week for us to go. Yeah, and I love I love that's where he likes to go, but then I'm always like, man, I wish, like, Half Acre or some other places had, like, a kid's menu, and then now they do, so... That'll be added to our rotation once the, the dry January is over. Is wet. Then I go back. <laughs> once it becomes wet February. Somebody was like, somebody said, hey, this wouldn't work for you. It's your birthday month and the Super Bowl. But somebody's like, you got to do dry dry February. It's the shortest month of the year. Smart. Although even, not that, even I mean, when it's a leap year. It's true. But you know, this year it's 29 <laughs> days. 29 days is here. It is a leap year. Yep. Yeah. I, uh, 
I'd like to go back to Half Acre. It was a lot of fun going to Old Irving with you guys. I tried their Ursa Major Baltic Porter, which I did find out is in cans. I don't, I don't remember being in cans before. It may have been, but I'm I'm excited about that because I want to I want to grab that. That was yeah, really good. Yeah, I think it was beer. the next day I, on Friday morning. I saw the that they did the cans. I was like, oh yeah. And those those wings and that sauce was insane. My stomach was not very happy though with me <clears throat> Friday morning. Didn't hurt coming on the way out, but my stomach was like, why were you just... So, Brandon did the wings. I'm surprisingly fine. Ah, I'm a wimp, I guess. <laughs> like, uh, I think I even wrote that in a text. Get ready for that hot wimp. one. <laughs> yeah, I know, I can't wait to do that. Uh, Brandon took down the six wings and smothered in this sauce that had, like, habanero, ancho chili. I forget everything that's in there. There was a lot. It was lovely. Yeah, and I had it as a dipping sauce for my chicken tenders, which those chicken tenders were amazing. That was... Those were fantastic. Those were like you can tell they're not, you know, frozen chicken yeah. gems you get at the store. These were nice and, and me, they were good. But it was nice to have it on the side to like just be able to like dip it in there. And yeah. I thought it was I thought it was tasty. I mean it's their wings sauce, they the chefs they have over there is like Yeah, I don't think I've had a bad like, wing sauce. No. Yeah. I mean, even when I've tried to make wings, I don't think I've had a better wing sauce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wings are just delicious, and I love them. It's really them. hard to screw up. Yeah, I mean, they're wings. Just, I might actually do some wings tomorrow. I think I'm just going to... I was thinking of that, too. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to post up at the house and watch football all day and maybe get some wings. Yeah, I was I was debating. I want to try the, uh, the sous vide method. What's the sous vide method? Um, so basically, you take, take wings, put them in a vacuum seal bag... And you sous vide them for like four hours oh, at wow. like 160 degrees or 65 degrees. Take them out, dry them, and then you air fry them. Ooh. And then, so they're fully, they're already fully cooked. And then you're just doing crisp it them up. to just get that skin crisped. And it's supposed to be like a fantastic wing. So I might have to do the same thing because I have my sous vide and I haven't used it in a while. Yeah. Oh. I, I love that thing. I've only used it like a hand, like I've used it three times. Yeah, I think me too, like two or three times. Somebody else told me too, it's uh, it's a great way to defrost things quickly. Oh, that makes sense. Because the, the whole point of like defrosting, like you know how they say like, you know, don't leave it out, you know, because yeah. it gets into the danger zone or whatever. Right. But if you throw it in frozen and set it at like the temperature you want, like you want Whatever it to the be same at. the temperatures, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, you necessarily wouldn't want it like fully cooked, but you could do it to like... I forget what the temperature they said it was, but you basically do it to that, so it's like defrosted and ready to go. And Whatever then, you want to do with it. Yeah, you don't leave it in there like at you know 100 degrees or 90 degrees for four hours. You do it for you know, however many minutes or like an hour maybe, and then you can cook it. So, have you ever sous vide a steak? No, the only thing I've sous vide is prime rib. Oh, nice. I did pork. I, I did sous vide some pork. Ooh, how was that? Pork was good. It was a pork uh, loin. It was awesome. It turned out great. Uh, but yeah, I've heard did that. Did you like, do anything to it afterwards, or did you? Yeah, just... yeah, I, I, I then like kind of I seared it off yeah. and everything. But yeah, other than that, it was perfect because it was the best way. I feel like that's doing a pork. Like I don't, I've never had. No, I never had, but I rarely have problems with drying out like pork loins. Mm-hmm. So that was a great way to guarantee I wasn't going to do it. I heard that people like doing a chicken, but like like chicken breast, but the texture, like because the way mm-hmm. you cook it, it might be a little weird for some, but. Maybe that's just because people are just used to having, like, fucking dried out chicken, so I don't know. But I've also gotten really good at, like, cooking chicken where it's not dry and not... Yeah. (laughs) Although, I will tell you this. I followed this recipe because I did these... uh, I've been doing these wraps for lunch, which have been very good because I don't want to buy lunch and I just like to meal prep on Sunday. Uh, I did... The last ones I did were ranch, chicken, and bacon wraps, uh, like, low... Calorie oh, yeah. tortillas and everything, and low calorie ranch, whatever. Uh, and it was good, but the recipe that I saw was like, you know, just cover your chicken breast with some oil, like olive oil, season it, pop it in the air fryer for like 18 minutes at 390 degrees. All right, cool. Did it, took it out. They looked awesome. I used that Kinder's uh, barbecue. Yeah, yeah. about it? Dry as fuck. Like, so, like, dried the fuck out of that chicken. <laughs> I was like, I should have just cooked this. Like, I know, but I was like, I was watching football. I was like, yeah. I don't really want to stand here and, you know, cook chicken, cook chicken <laughs> but I still want to get. So, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. Like, especially once I mix it with the ranch and, like, the bacon that I made up and, and rolled it on the, the. It's just too long? Yeah, it didn't have to be in there that long. It, oh, excuse me. It probably could have gone, like, 15 minutes okay. and I could have turned it off and let it sit in there. 
Like I do that. I've done that before. I did that with the, I just did these stuffed sweet potatoes that turned out pretty good. I kind of feel like I just could have just had a sweet potato and been fine. Yeah. Um, but I roasted sweet potatoes and I did it for how long I was supposed to do it. Like 45 minutes. Yeah, I don't know how much. Took it out, poked it. I'm like, feels kind of soft. So I cut one open and I'm like, that is not finished in the middle. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I let it go for another like. 10 20 minutes and then i just turned it off and let it sit there and then like an hour later i went in there and i opened it up and they looked perfect like nice. it was great like it was coming off of the skin Ooh, so i mashed it up a little bit inside the skin then added my ground chicken that i had seasoned uh pulled up and then like you shred cheese and put it on top and then pop it like in the oven again or i did the air fryer which again it was good like it was fine but I was like, eh, I could have just ate a sweet potato and I had like a meat side. I don't yeah. necessarily know. Like I feel like with a regular potato, like a like a russet potato, mm-hmm. that'd be funny if you're like ground beef and like almost like a loaded baked potato. But this is supposed to be like a here's a high protein. You know, did you send me the video potato. or did I like I remember seeing a video recently? Somebody made a sweet potato and they put an avocado in it. What? I didn't send that. And then eggs on top of it. What? And like, like all this, and they're like, oh, it's like a meal. Like, I was like, I don't know if that stuff goes together. Like avocado and a sweet potato. I mean, eggs. that's healthy as fuck. I mean, that's a very yeah. healthy, high protein, good fat type meal there. But, geez, but yeah, well, come on now. I don't, I don't know if I want to do all that. Yeah. I mean, you can do some avocado toast and throw an egg on that. And Indeed. Then, have sweet potato hash brown on the side, sure. <laughs> As one should. Brandon, how many harps are you giving this, this um, Guinness Zero? I'm going to go four. I'm with you. I'm going for. Sorry, everybody just heard me vape. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going four. I feel like this is very solid. I put there. I put this up there with the Go Brewing that yeah. we've had. Those are my it, two favorites so far. Indeed. Or of this year. Not so far. Yeah, and then, like I'm, I'm impressed because like this being... 60 calories like a regular guinness is like up like almost 200 i think close to that no it's it's regular, super low oh yeah actually no that, i am wrong yeah. it's like yeah the, the, that's the that's the, you know that's the big misconception is maybe that, that's the thing yeah that's like, uh that's why when i saw it i was like oh that makes sense because it's 125 calories okay yeah um that makes sense so it's half the calories of a regular guinness so i feel like yes you could tell a difference if you're having these side by side but as far as na beers go this is really, really tasty, and I, I do enjoy a good Guinness every now yeah, and then. well done. And this was made in Ireland. Yeah. So, overall, I would say if I was ranking them, I would go Guinness <laughs> All Out Trail Pass. Yeah, I can agree with that. I think that's that's, that's where I'm at. Um, and, again, I think only the reason why I said it for Trail Pass is because I felt more it was like a hoppy water to me yeah. than a beer. But I did appreciate the malty sweetness. Those two... We're just lacking some bitterness in Guinness. Uh, hit the bitterness, tastes like Guinness, and uh, had this, the right carbonation like yeah. Guinness does. You know, had the nitro. You can't go wrong know. with that nitro in there. Never. Well, that's it, man. We have uh, accomplished our NA uh, episodes. Woo-hoo! We did it, even though there was only two this year because of the way that we were able to work everything in. So that was easy for us. We had some time off from yeah. drinking. I'm going to go home and drink some beers now after this. So that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, after having that, it's funny. They say, like, you know, oh, Guinness isn't heavy. But, like, every time I have a Guinness, though, I'm usually like, meh, I'm, I'm kind of full. Just had three, like, three NA beers. I'm like, I'm probably just going to have a beer. And I still through. don't, like, under, like, when I used to go to the... We used to go there to Christine's. Christina's place? Yeah, and it yeah, was that's like... I got engaged. <laughs> well, I know, but I'm like the... Dude, I'd go there when it was like the $2, 250 Guinnesses, and it'd like... I'm like, how did I just have like six Guinnesses? <laughs> Bro, they're now $3 Guinnesses, and there's a Fuck that place. bar on Northwest Highway called Coaches that's owned by the same people that also have $3 Guinnesses. Really? <laughs> yeah. So they Where have, is it? Coaches is near Northwest Highway in Harlem. Okay. Yeah, so they have uh, they have three dollars Guinness there as well. Good to know. Might be there uh, doing some karaoke for my birthday. So just a heads up on that, mm. in case anybody listens. Do they, they want to come see. In all of February, apparently they do. Oh. So on they Saturdays, knew, they knew you were coming. Uh, they knew it was for me, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Sneak on in there. There you go. All right, man. Brandon, I love you, buddy. Love you too, man. And thank you, everybody, for listening. I uh, hope your dry January went well and that we hopefully helped you either get through it at some point or you got some new ideas or you've tried these beers as well. And if you have, let us know what you think. Next week, we're back at it again. We're back to drinking booze. Oh, oh boy. It's going to get the- crazy. <laughs>
back into the Thunderdome. Who's coming back to the <laughs> podcast this year? We'll never know, but by the next episode, we'll have a new bumper, so we'll find out what happens. <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye. This has been The Malting Hour. Be sure to follow us on all social media by searching The Malting Hour and at themaltinghour.com. You can also follow us individually on social media. Brandon can be found on Instagram as bmdub81, on Twitter, bdub81, and on untapped as bdubdrinksbeer. Tony can be found on Instagram and untapped under Ace of Help Chicago, on Twitter, the Ace of Help Chicago. Clark can be found as Clarkowski on all three. Dan can be found on Instagram as hip underscore underscore hops and hip hops on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, like, and rate the show on your preferred podcast listening platform. Until next time, cheers from all of us at the Malting Hour.